Since today we're about to talk about, we're going to talk about success. I talk about success in every video in some way, shape, or form. But today we're going to talk about the vending machine of success. Because I think all y'all pretty much understand what it takes to get success. Work hard, be consistent, be persistent, understand what you understand what it is that you want, get focused on your goal, and just keep working hard until you get it. I think everybody already knows that, but that doesn't mean everybody goes out and does it every single day. Sometimes people need to be delivered the exact same information in a different way. What's going on, Jazz from Pittsburgh? You in history class? Forget history, man. We talking about the future. All right, you know what? You know why, why don't high schools and colleges have future classes? You know, they got history class to tell you what happened already. What about future classes about what's about to happen? Because my class is like future class. I don't teach history. I teach the future. So I'm going to teach you all about what's about to happen, not what already happened. You know, because they can write books about what already happened. Everybody can talk about what happened. You know, how do you ever hear that phrase? Some people don't know what happened. Some people want to know what happened. Then there's people who make things happen. So you understand, we about to talk about what's about to happen. We talk about what we're going to make happen. How I'm going to empower all of you, give you the that you need to go make whatever happen that you want to make happen. Yeah, they don't make they don't do classes about that kind of stuff, man, because they can't teach it. They can't teach what they don't know. But understand that it is somebody who teaches that stuff, it's just not in school. You understand the information is there, it's just not in school. So let me get to the point of why the, this scope is titled what is titled. Because as I was saying, a lot of people know what it takes to get success. What's going on? Uh HFO tall leaks i don't know how to pronounce that but you said hello hello back to you mark pie what's going on listen heather all right that's easy much easier to say heather what's going on where are you checking in from heather harlem joe what's up now harlem joe how'd you get the name harlem joe when you live in in bosnia all right heather i appreciate that look um what was what was i saying sometimes i get sidetracked by the comments but look but i appreciate the comments because the comments give me ideas for the next stream that i'm going to do but here's the thing when i talk about success Everybody knows the principles to success. You know what to do to be successful. Work hard, you know, say no to drugs, listen to people who've done it before you, get the information, get focused on your goal, be consistent, be persistent, keep doing it, and eventually you'll reach success. All of you already know that. That's not news to anybody. But sometimes you gotta deliver people the information in a different way, a different method of delivering it, because everybody doesn't learn the same way. And the same piece of information doesn't stick to each person's brain the exact same way. For instance, everybody in here gets hungry, right? Okay. No, you ain't interrupting me, Heather. This is part of this is part of the process. See, people leaving comments is part of the process of Periscope. That's what makes it great. See, if I just wanted to make videos where I'm talking to myself and then I put it out on YouTube, and then the only way you can interact with me is leaving comments, and I can just record this by myself and put it on YouTube, and we won't have an interaction. But I like the interaction of Periscope, which is why I've been using it so much, and I'm going to continue to use it because I like y'all being able to comment and ask me questions in real time instead of having to wait till the video comes out. The video might not come out till ten days after I recorded it i'm not even thinking about it no more when you ask me a question it's not in the same time i might not be in the same state as when i said it so it's not the same interaction so i like the immediacy of this and he said harlem joe said he likes the song hey joe and he's a fan of the harlem globe charter so that's why he called himself harlem joe i appreciate that's that's a good one that's a good one harlem joe i used to play for this basketball team called the harlem ambassadors so they were like the harlem globe charters but we was like the the costco version <laughs> all right you ever been to costco all right, so we was the Costco version of the Harlem Globetrotters, and that's prob probably why you never heard of that team. But that's a that's a different Periscope stream. Actually, I'm gonna do one on that. Let me write down that idea. On uh, I got I keep a list of all the ideas, like these stuff that I be making videos about. Yo, I don't I don't just store all this in my head. I'm not a genius. I just write down every good idea I get. Even I write down the bad ideas I get. I write down every idea because listen, I might have a terrible idea right now. And three years from now, I'm going to look at it with some new information, new perspective I have on life and say, you know what? Now I can use that idea. And then I make content out of it. So I didn't come up with putting up all this content just by thinking up something at the moment. I do think up things at the moment often, but I write down all my ideas. So whenever I don't have one immediately, I just go to my list and see what I got. If you saw the list of ideas that I got for content, you wouldn't believe it. Like I'm going to die before I put all this stuff out. I want all y'all to understand that. I've come to terms with that fact. Now, what what was it that all right, Harlem Harlem ambassadors? And see, I almost forgot what I was going to write down. See, that's why you got to write down your ideas. All right, y'all, just bear with me one second. All right, so we're going to talk about when we talk about success. The thing that I was about to say, the analogy that I was going to use, understand that each one of us, everybody watching this stream, you ate food today, right? We all get hungry. We all need to put food in our bodies in order to give us energy to go do our thing, to nourish ourselves for our, so our body could do its involuntary 
it's mechanisms, your heart beating, the blood going through your veins, breathing, blinking, all that stuff, right? But guess what? Everybody doesn't eat the same food. I guarantee everybody watching this stream, we've eaten some different types of food all. Each of us have our unique diets that we've eaten today in order to get the food that we need. And it's the same thing with success, with motivation, with inspiration, with people getting information to do their thing. So understand that I might say something one way that you get that maybe your school teacher saying the exact same point, but you just didn't get it coming coming from her. Maybe you weren't open to listening to her. Maybe you weren't open. What's going on? D. Robertson is actually from Harlem. So we got a Harlem guy in Bosnia and we got a Harlem guy who's actually in Harlem. See, that's what Periscope does. That's what the internet does. It brings people together. That's what Work On Your Game University does. This is a diverse student body here. So listen, what I was saying was that People get information different ways. The same person might give you the exact same information. I mean, two different people might give you the exact same information, but you didn't hear a word the first person said, but you hear everything the second person says. So now I'm going to get into what we're talking about today, was the vending machine of success. Appreciate y'all bearing with me. Now, please, as I start talking, please keep hitting those hearts as many times as possible. We are getting to 200,000 hearts today. All right, I don't care how many streams I got to do, how long I got to do it, who I got to recruit to make it happen. We are getting to 200,000 hearts today all right not tomorrow not next week not eventually today right now because i got my periscope page pulled up on my laptop on one of my computers right now i got 178,000 hearts i was actually up to 179,000 right now now see that's the power of periscope we already at 179 we are going to get to 200,000 actually i'm looking at myself live streaming right now and heather told me that i'm a beautiful human being i know baby that's what my mom always told me you know is a self-fulfilling prophecy i believed it and now i'm coming into it now look i, I can actually see myself y'all about to see me holding up this computer in a second it's on a little bit of a delay y'all see the hearts right there y'all see me y'all hearts is up there on the screen mr underdog coming through this is the power of technology if somebody would have told me look at that Look at that. Now, it, it could just keep going. You'll see mirrors. You ever see them thing where there's just a whole bunch of mirrors? But look, somebody would have told me 20 years ago that something like this was possible. I wouldn't have believed it. Y'all wouldn't believe it either. But I definitely need to get into my topic because all y'all clicked on it because y'all saw the topic. And we about to talk about the vending machine of success. Vivid said, I'm his favorite person in the whole world. I appreciate that. So, Vivid, you know what we need to do? We need to take that feeling that you're feeling right now and we need to spread it. See, if you feel that way, then we just need to get one other person to feel that way. Then both of y'all go get one more person to feel that way. And it keep going over and over again. Eddie Las Vegas said, I look like a police. How? How do I look like a police? I, ne I never seen a police person wearing a, a snapback hat while they was at work. What do you mean by I look, <laughs> I look like a police? Well, I'm not police. I don't work for the police. I don't even know if I know that many police. I know a couple firefighters, but that's about it. But look, the vending machine is success. All right, no, I'm not a police. But what if I was? Even if I was a police, there's some smart policemen out there that could probably teach you something that you could use to be more successful in your life. What's going on? Be phenomenal. But anyway, look, we're talking about the vending machine and success. Now, all y'all know what vending machines are, right? Now, me personally, I don't even like using vending machines that much because a vending machine... All right, people coming in with questions. Underdog, how do you follow me on this? Swipe to the right and hit the little follow button under my name. You click on my name and just hit the follow button. So make sure you follow me and turn on your notifications. So every time I go live, you get an immediate notification on your phone that interrupts whatever you're doing. I don't care if you're doing schoolwork. I don't care if you're talking to your grandma. It's going to interrupt you and you get on Periscope so you can hear what I got to say because it's going to be important. Now, look, check this out. Vending machines. All y'all know what vending machines are. I don't really use vending machines that often because, number one, is usually just a bunch of junk food in it, you know, and it's overpriced junk food. Oh, uh, we don't hope. We ain't got a rose. You ain't got to hope that we get to 200. That's a guarantee. We are getting to 200. Right now, I'm at 181. And the crazy thing is, I'm looking at this online while I'm talking to y'all because I'm on my phone doing the scope. But online, the hearts actually, the numbers actually go up in real time. So I'm watching the numbers go up. Right now, we at 181, 670. And it's going up as y'all keep hitting the hearts. So please keep hitting the hearts. We're going to get to 200 in this stream. All right, forget it. Not today. Right now, we getting to 200 right now. All right, I thought we was going to, I'm going to do multiple streams a day, but I think we're going to do it in this stream. But anyway, let me get to the point before I lose some of y'all. I did a lot of talking. I didn't get to the point yet. Look, I don't really like use vending machi using vending machines because the stuff is overpriced. It's junk food. Now, listen, I ain't no saint. I do eat junk food. I ate a Snickers bar on Saturday, I think. So I eat junk food. I eat uh, caramel popcorn is one of my favorites. You know, uh, when my girl's on her period, she'd be buying junk food like uh, <laughs> cookies, uh, popcorn, um, ice cream sandwiches. 
And no, I eat it too. You know, I, I commiserate with her, you know, sometimes when she's going through that, that phase. The females on here know exactly what I'm talking about. So listen, look, <laughs> with vending machines, I don't really like buying it out of there because it's overpriced. And if I'm going to eat junk food, I might as well go to Target or Walmart or Walgreens and at least get a good price on the junk food if I'm going to eat it and not tax myself by buying it. But here's the thing with junk food and success. So here's the point. Success is just like a vending machine, not junk food and success, vending machines and success. Success is just like a vending machine. And I want you all to understand this. Follow my logic and what I'm saying here. Number one, because the vending machine and success work the exact same way. So point step number one, identify what it is that you want. All right. So when you walk up to a vending machine and you want some food out of there, let's say you you stuck in some arena or in some place, some building where the only place to get something to eat is at the vending machine. So you got to bite the bullet and you got to spend a dollar fifty on this little ass Snickers bar, not the little double Snickers bars where it's two of them. No, like the little the old Snickers bar is a dollar fifty, but it ain't nowhere else to get food. So you got to get it because you got to eat. So look, you identify what you want. You look at the machine. You see what you want. You like, all right, I want that. Now, what's the next step? What's the next step when you're at a vending machine and you've identified what you want? What's the next thing? What's the next thing that you have to do in order to actually get it? Somebody help me out here. This is interactive here. This ain't no lecture. All right, this is not a lecture. This ain't no soliloquy. This ain't no speech. This is an interactive conversation here. So somebody tell me what's the next thing you do after you identify what you want in the vending machine. Trey T, exactly. Be phenomenal. Eddie Las Vegas, exactly. Everybody got it. K E H C O. You pull out your money. So what is that? How how does that young young and humble 22 swish NBA? Exactly. You see how much it costs, and then what do you gotta do? You gotta pay the price. Exactly. The next step, once you identify what you want at a vending machine, after you identified it, your next step is you gotta pay the price. Exactly. Of course you better have some money, right? You if you ain't got no money, you gotta go get some money, and then you gotta come back to the vending machine and you gotta pay the price. Right now, after you pay the price. You put your money in the vending machine for what you want. You push the button A7 for whatever it is you want. What's the next thing you got to do? The next thing that you have to do, I'm going I'm to wait till y'all say it. What's the next thing you do after you put the money in? If you're watching this on YouTube, please get on Periscope and follow me so that y'all can interact with me in the conversation instead of having to wait until I put this out on YouTube. All right, so look. So people have a couple different answers and you're all right. So I'm a, we're going to talk about this because there's a lot of is a lot of nooks and crannies in it because all y'all understand, right? Look, success doesn't just happen like this, right? It's not like I do one, two, three, four and I'm successful, right? Exactly. After you pay your money and you hit the button A7 for what you want, then you got to wait for the process. What's the process after you hit the button? The computer in the machine has to send a message to that part of the machine that you got to get rid of it. And then what happens? You know how that little metal turny thing got to turn? You watch it turn. It turns slowly. And then hopefully, hopefully, your prize falls out. You get your success. You get your snack. You get your Snickers bar. You get your bag of chips. You get your ice cream sandwich and the prize falls out. But wait a minute. We know that success is not that simple. How many people here have ever been successful in that process? They saw it, they paid, and they got their prize. And it was it was just straight through, no problems whatsoever. Any of you have ever experienced that? Anybody can tell me. Has has anybody ever had that experience? I know I haven't, so if any of you have, then sure, I want to know about it. Have any of you had that experience? Because it hasn't happened to me. You just see it. No, it doesn't happen all the time. No, it doesn't happen at all, <laughs> Mr. Underdog. It don't happen at all. Not any real valuable success. Maybe a little success, a small success. Like if I say I want to go to the gas station to get some gas, I can identify, I can pay, and I can get the gas. But is that real success? I'm talking about a real success. Have any of you had that happen? So anyway, we know that the prize doesn't always fall out that easily. You got to wait. The process of that prize falling out might take you five years. It might take you 10 years before that prize falls out of the machine, before the Snickers bar falls. It might take a little bit of how many of you ever put money in the vending machine and the thing turns, but the food don't fall out of the machine. And you like, yo, I just paid a dollar fifty for that bag of chips. And if the thing turn and the bag of chips ain't fall, it's like, wait a minute, wait, wait, look, this machine stole my money, right? How many of you ever had a vending machine steal your money or at least try to steal your money? Now, when the vending machine steals your money, this is a very important point. And remember, we're talking about success here. We're not talking about chips and Snickers bars. When the vending machine steals your money, you got a couple of options. Right, and this is this is the crux of the whole thing when it comes to success, when it comes to vending machines and everything else. This is the crux of it. Because you got a few options when the vending machine tries to steal your money. Option number one is you could go and complain to somebody like, yo, the vending machine stole my money. Can you help me out? The vending machine 
I put a dollar fifty in the vending machine and I didn't get my success. What is going on? You go to tell the janitor. You go tell the person who works in the building, like, yo, what can I do? And usually what do they do? They tell you, like, yo, that's not our machine. The vendor owns the machine. The vendor ain't here. So it ain't really nothing we can do. Or maybe they give you your dollar fifty back. Sometimes they give you your dollar fifty back. But understand when we talk about vending machines, you talk about success. Once you pay the price for success, nobody can refund you. Uh, you can't be refunded the price for your success. Somebody said call the number, the one eight hundred number on the side of the machine. Yeah, you can, but then you gotta wait ten days before they call you back, if they call you back at all. And if and when they call you back, what they gonna do? Send you a check for a dollar fifty. Look, so this is one option that people have. Please y'all keep hitting the hearts. We got it, we need the ventricular fibrillation that they told me that phrase I'm remembering it now please keep hitting those hearts swipe this to swipe to the right right now and hit the share button to share this on your Twitter feeds your Facebooks tell your teacher but tell your teacher stop the lecture and put this on TV y'all got it is it a TV in your classroom somebody hook up your your phone cord to into the TV and let everybody just watch this. All right, tell the teacher to chill out for today. Tell the teacher to take off. Tell her it's a three-day weekend. All right, to Monday, Monday off. All right, y'all listen to this so y'all can get some real information. And the teacher can use this too. So this ain't, I'm not pushing the teacher aside. I'm, I'm teaching everybody in the room. All right, everybody, ev no exceptions. So look, you put your money in the machine, the machine takes your money. All right, the machine doesn't give you what you want. Kenny, go hard. Thank you for sharing. The machine doesn't give you what you want. So one option is you could go complain. You go tell somebody like, hey, I did all this work and I'm not getting any success. What is going on? I keep working. I keep working on my handle and I don't feel like I'm getting better. I work on my jump shot every day, but one day I'm making shots and the next day I'm not making shots. I've been calling every agent and every over email and every overseas team in the world and nobody is nobody is writing me back. I've been talking to every agent out there and sending them my tapes, but nobody's interested in representing me. I keep going to tryouts every year, but the coach never picks me on the basketball team. I work on my game every single day by myself, but when I go to the park, nobody wants to pass me the ball. I keep lifting weights and I'm eating all the food I could possibly eat but I'm not gaining any muscle what's the problem I keep using jump I keep doing jump ropes and I keep doing squats and I keep lifting weights and I got the jump manual and I looked at the exercises and I start doing it my own way and my vertical didn't increase by 10 inches Dre somebody scammed me what is going on I paid the price and I'm not getting the prize what is the problem isn't that what most people do how many of you have heard those phrases before or something like it how many of you have used phrases like that before and don't feel bad if you have because listen I have in my life, I've done that. I paid the price for something. I'm like, where the hell is my success? Where is my Snickers bar? Where is my bag of chips? I paid and the machine is stealing my money. What is going on right now? You start complaining to yourself. You complain to your barber. You complain to the janitor. You complain to your mom. You complain to your dog. And you like, where is my success? I paid all this money. Where is it at? All right. Isn't that what happens at vending machines? Sometimes people go complain to the, you in the lunchroom trying to get uh, something out the vending machine. The vending machine don't work. And then you go complain to the lunch lady. Like, yo, where my where my prize at? <laughs> She's like, what you want me to do? I don't own the machine. I can't do nothing. Y'all know. Yes, it's definitely going up on YouTube later. Everything you see here will go up on YouTube. Yeah, this is just an example. I know the, I know the jump manual is an excellent product. I wouldn't endorse it if it wasn't. But y'all understand it's just an example that I'm using. Uh, is the connection good? Are y'all able to? Are y'all catching the connection? It looks, it looks like it's a little jumpy right now. It might be because I'm on Periscope on my uh, computer right here at the same time that I'm talking to y'all. I might have to close this out. All right, that wasn't that wasn't what I meant to do. <laughs> All right. All right, I might have to close this. All right, connection's good. Perfect. All right, look. So. The one option is you can complain. The machine didn't give me my money. What's this, what's another option you got? If you put money in the vending machine, it doesn't give you your money. This is the this is the option that I actually recommend to most people. I say what you got to do is not don't go complain to somebody that the machine didn't give you your money. The next I know we all complain. Rose, don't feel bad. Everybody complains at times. All of us got to catch ourselves at times complaining, or I like to use a better word. I like to say bitching. Uh, y'all yeah, y'all know what that means is people just bitching about the situation bitching because they didn't get in the game bitching because they didn't make the team bitching because they lifting weights and not getting no muscles bitching because they keep going to school and studying but they keep failing the test bitching but look everybody does it at times that's fine if you put money in the machine it doesn't give you your some people said take out another dollar put in more money that's one option but i wasn't even thinking that here's another option here's another option besides putting in more money start banging on that start banging on the machine <laughs> start banging on it like yo I put a dollar fifty in here like give me my give me what I paid for all right I'll pay for this give me what I paid for all right you want to get your all right you want to get your prize you like yo 
I paid for this, give me what I paid for you. So you bang on the machine. You might have to get a little bit aggressive going after your success. You put in the price. You paid what you were supposed to pay. It didn't give you what you wanted just yet. It's not over. You got to get a little bit aggressive with it. Maybe you might have to you know, bang on that thing a little bit, move it around a little bit, shake it up a little bit. Like You might have to shake it up. Do something a little bit different than what you've been doing. Put a little bit of different energy into what you're doing. Get a little bit more aggressive and assertive and confident. Have some posture in going after your success. Act like it belongs to you instead of acting like maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. Stop asking success to meet you halfway and go to his house. Right? How many of you ever told, had somebody who was supposed to meet you at a certain spot and they didn't show up? They didn't show up. You got two choices. You can either go back home or you could go to their house. Like, yo, you were supposed to meet me at such and such two, 30 minutes ago. Where you at? Go knock on their door. Like, yo, I'm at your house. I'm going to keep knocking on the door until you answer. I'm going to keep beeping my horn until you come outside. Either you're going to come outside or you're just going to have to listen to me beeping this horn. But either way, I'm going to get what I came here for. So sometimes you got to get a little bit aggressive with the vending machine and success. You got to bang on it a little bit, shake it up a little bit to get what you want. Another option is you can put more money in. You can put more time in, put more effort in, put more blood, sweat, and tears in, and maybe that'll help you get your prize. Now, here's the next thing. Here's the next part, right? Right, you got to want it more than everybody else. Here's the next part of, of success, the vending machine and success. Because with a vending machine... How long does the whole process take? You see what you want, you put the money in, the thing turns, it drops, you grab it, you walk away. It takes like a minute, two minutes at the most, right? But see, it, with actual success, you got to multiply that by, in years, by maybe 10. So you take as long as it takes a vending machine process, multiply that by 10 years, you got success in life. So if it takes you two minutes, it might take you 20 years to get that success in life. You willing to work for 20 years, you willing to put your money in and wait for the, that thing to turn so that you can get it? So that you can get the prizes you came off. Golden Hoops, what's going on? Welcome. Swipe to the right. Y'all share this on your Twitter feeds. Please keep hitting those hearts. We had 181,000 hearts right now. So look, next thing is this. You know what happens? Have you ever come up to a vending machine or stood in line at a vending machine or watched somebody at a vending machine? They put their money in. The thing turns, but the food doesn't come out. The junk food doesn't come out. Snickers bar don't come out. And they shake the machine. They slap the machine, they go complain to the janitor, and they don't they still don't get their bag of chips. You know what a lot of people do at that point? What do people do at that point? Y'all know. Like tell me. Tell me what happens once people shake the machine, they paid their money, nothing's coming out the way they're supposed to. What do people do? Things right, they quit, they give up, they walk away. Exactly. They walk away from the vending machine, like damn. I just paid a dollar fifty. The machine stole my money. That's the that's the story that they tell themselves. They go, they go the next five years of their life, and anybody who asks about it, what do they say? The machine stole my money. I did all this work. I didn't get no results. I worked all these years in that business. I didn't make no income. I worked on my game all these months, and I didn't get any results. I keep practicing, practicing, and practicing, and the coach is hating on me. I tried out for the team, but since I don't know the coach's dad's cousin, I didn't make the basketball team. Have you ever heard people make those type of complaints? Exactly. Blame it on something else. Blame it on somebody else. Make all these excuses. They make up this story in their head, which is their perception, which becomes their reality. Reality, which is what they regurgitate to people over and over again for the rest of their lives. Oh, yeah, that I did that. I didn't make any money. Oh, yeah, that I tried that. The coach wouldn't help me out. Oh, yeah, him. I asked him for help. He wouldn't help me. I put in all this effort and he wouldn't help me. I wrote Dre this long email and asked him to help me out. And he wrote me back a one sentence response. What is that? That is do people do that? Absolutely. They do that. Right. They complain about what they didn't get as if the vending machine owes them. You paid the money. The vending machine is success. Sometimes you got to pay a little bit extra. Sometimes you got to get aggressive. Sometimes you got to shake it up. So this is what happens, though. This, this is the funny part that y'all got to catch. And this is, the, this is the jewel for all y'all to take with you right here, right? Since you know, since you know, all of you have already agreed, you know that there are people in life who will pay their money to the vending machine of success, not get the prize that they paid for, and then walk away when they realize, walk away when they accept, not realize, but they accept the fact that they're not going to get it. It's not, a, it's not a fact from the universe, it's a fact in their own mind, because we all each have our own set of facts, right? We all each have our own set of beliefs, and our beliefs are our perceptions, our perceptions come reality, and reality is a fact. So we each have our own set of facts in life, right? So knowing that there are a whole bunch of people in the world who accept as a fact that there's a point they're not going to get their success and they walk away from the vending machine after they paid their money, what, uh, what opportunity does that leave you? Now think about a vending machine again. Remember the analogy is a vending machine. The opportunity it leaves you is this. 
if you come up right behind them to the vending machine and their food almost fell out but it didn't, all you got to do is put some money in, push the same button, A7, and what do you get? What happens to you when you push the exact same button that they push, but they wasn't willing to wait or they wasn't willing to do what was necessary to make their prize, make their success, make their bag of chips or their Snickers bar fall out of the machine? What's the opportunity that you have right now, now that they didn't, they didn't stick around to get their prize? Somebody please answer that question for me. This is not a rhetorical question. What's the prize, ladies and gentlemen? Somebody help me out. What is the prize that you got? I'm feeling like the connection is behind. I'm, I see the hearts, but I'm not seeing the comments. Maybe I might have to close this one up. All right, close it on my computer. All right, Eddie Las Vegas with the answer. Exactly. You get two of them. You get two. So the person who came before you, they did all that work. They put in all that effort. They paid the price to get what they wanted. But guess what? They left before the prize dropped. They left before they got their success. So if you come up right behind them, even if you didn't know which button they push, because guess what? In life is a whole bunch of people who go through life leaving projects undone. They leave their success unachieved, even after they put down some money for it. They put down all this money for their success. They don't stick around to get the success or don't do what's necessary. They don't put that extra oomph into what they got to do to get the success. Then what happens? They walk away. You come up next. You put in effort and you get two for the price of one. You get two Snickers bars. You get two bags of chips. You get their success that they walked away from before they got it. Didn't even know how close they were to it. And you get your success because a whole bunch of people put down down payments and never come to collect the money. Y'all know that? You know how many people put down a down payment on something and never even come to actually finish, but the down payment is non-refundable, so they don't get their money back. You understand that? Like a hotel, if you go to a hotel and you say, oh, I want to rent out this ballroom on Thursday, they're going to be like, all right, it's a $250 non-refundable deposit. People put down that $250 non-refundable deposit, then they never show up on Thursday, the ballroom goes unused, and the hotel gets to keep that $250. You know how many times a year that happens? How much money hotels make off just keeping people's non-refundable deposits? <laughs> how much money life makes of keeping people's non-refundable deposits on success they put down all this money time effort blood sweat and tears and never come to collect what they paid for and then you can step up next and be like oh let me put let me pay my normal amount you're going to get their time and your time so you rented the room for two hours but they're going to be like yo the person who paid never showed up for their two hours so matter of fact you could have a room for four hours just because you showed up at the right time, you was willing to put down the full price, do what you had to do to get it, and now you got your prize. Now you got two of them. That's the vending machine of success. Does everybody understand the, the analogy? I know it's a drawn out analogy, but I want to make sure all y'all understand that. I just wrote about it today, matter of fact. The idea just hit me. I think I heard, maybe it might have been Jim Rohn say something like that. But understand that the vending machine works that way. If you're in school right now, you see a vending machine. There's vending machines in there. They still got vending machines in school selling y'all junk. Right, I thought we was being a more healthy uh, America. But anyway, <laughs> Joey Guns was going on. You got to put the money in. Identify what you want. Number two, tell it what you want. Number three, pay the price. Number four, wait for the process to go through. 4.5 is what's going on, Joey Guns. Number 4.5, which means you might have to do this, you might not. You might have to slap the machine around, shake it up, and get what you want. Oh, here's, here's the other thing. This is what happens sometimes. Sometimes they got low-fat foods in the vending machines now. Okay, that's a, that's a start, I guess. Here's what happens sometimes. Oh they, took, oh, they took the vending machines out of school five years ago. That's what's up. That's great. Now, look at this. Sometimes... You get an individual who wants to get something for nothing. Any of you know any people who try to get something for nothing all the time? Maybe not even in the vending machine, but just in life. You know what happens when people try to get something for nothing out of the vending machine? You know what they got to do? They got to they gotta try to tilt the machine. Like they, you, got the, you know how a vending machine is. So you stand up against the machine. You put your foot up against the bottom, wedge it against the bottom, and you try to tilt the machine forward so that the food falls, just falls out without you having to pay for it. You know what happens to people who try to tilt the vending machine to success too often? All right, the machine falls on you. <laughs> right, you know what happened? Any of you ever had a vending machine fall on you? Or ever heard of somebody or seen somebody have a vending machine fall on them? All right, you know what you're going to end up with? You're going to end up with some, some punctured lungs or a lot of scrapes and cuts on your body because you got that glass window in the front. You might have some broken bones. You might have a broken ankle, a torn ACL, or you might die. 
you know, vending machines ain't light. <laughs> vending machines is heavy. All right, if you find you have a vending machine fall on you, Joey said, "Yeah, on a thousand ways to die." I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it sounds like that's somewhere you would see that somebody have a vending machine fall on you. You try to tilt the vending machine to success and try to get something for nothing, the machine will fall on you. All right, and the machine falls on you. No, you can't get up from a, a vending machine falling on you, underdog. You might not. You might not get up from that. All right, that might be the last thing you do. Uh, you try to tilt the vending machine to success. It's going to fall right on top of your ass. You got to wait for somebody to pull it off you so you can get up. And you probably won't even be able to stand up. They're going to have to carry you off to the paramedics or something. And then you're going to get in trouble from whoever vending machine you broke. Because guess what? You got to pay for that vending machine. Uh, them machines ain't free. That vendor, he makes his money by collecting money out of that vending machine. You broke it, that vending machine going to have a problem with you. The vending machine weighs like a 1,000 pounds. All right, Joey said, you ain't getting up. All right? A thousand pound object falls on you. You're not standing up and walking away. Trust me, you won't. All right, if you don't believe me, go try to tilt over a vending machine. You'll see. You're going to find out real quick. Real quick. All right. You can't try to tilt over the vending machine to success. In the end, this is how success works. As I was saying, you pay, you identify, you pay, let the process go through, shake it up if you have to. You get what you want. Other people quit. You can get double. Now, in the end, at the end of all this, just to wrap this all up, understand that the vending machine of life works the same way for everybody. It might like it might look like it didn't work that way for somebody else, but guess guess what? It works like that for everybody. And like it takes two minutes to get some candy, it might take you 10, 20, 30 years, five years, two years, six months to get the success that you want. And it ain't no shortcuts to it. But all of you, at any point, is welcome to stand there and look through the glass and admire the success on the other side. But know if you want it. It's one thing to sit there and look at it and know about it and read it and study it and think about it. PI tour was going on, but it's a whole other thing to pay the price and get the prize. And we're going to come back with another scope before the end of the day. I might just come right back with another one. So make sure y'all turn on the notifications under Dre all day so y'all can see every time I come up here with a new scope. Because I got a lot of stuff to share with y'all. Work on your game. Dre all day. Oh yeah, before I even get to that, if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching this on Periscope right now, follow me on YouTube. The website is Work On Your Game. W O R K O N Y O U R G A dot M E. Work On Your Game. That's Work On Your G A dot Me. You understand that? Work On Your G A dot Me. That's my YouTube channel. Subscribe to that channel because everything you miss about that I put out on Periscope is going to come out on YouTube. I'm going to do another scope, y'all. So if you got questions, listen, just turn on your notifications. I'm going to be right back and do another one. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com. Checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.